Shall we move on then to Gremlins 2? I think we should probably do that. Sequels are not a rare thing, especially not sequels. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, I'm not sorry, right? sorry, sorry, Drew. I'm not that. I'm not laughing, but I was just that completely caught me off guard. I'm not being patronising or anything. That has genuinely just tickled me. <laughs> okay, um, Craig tickled. Um, yeah, sequels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to finish this. I even start this. <laughs> oh my days! I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll exit the room. I'll go and get another can of coke. No, I'll don't exit the room, please. I want you to hear what I have to say so you can respond to well, it. Okay, okay, work. I will. That, that's very Thank kind you. of you to say because you would be well within your rights to tell me to f*** off. Oh, Not dear. tonight, Josephine. I am... No, I am very sorry, Drew. I forgot myself for a moment there and something about that absolutely tickled me and I'm not entirely sure I can articulate why. Thank you for your patience. Thank that's you for okay. your understanding. You You are a better man than I. I'll not argue. Sequels are not a rare thing, especially not two very successful movies. 1984's Gremlins made over $200 million. But fourth wall-breaking self-referential meta-sequels? Those are less common. Like many sequels, Gremlins 2 The New Batch is similar in both structure and content to the original. Only bigger and more. Yet it's also not similar. It's really, really not. The reason for that is returning director Joe Dante, who didn't have the best of times in Gremlins due to the difficulty of working with the creatures themselves, and wasn't at all keen on returning for another film. After trying, and failing, for a number of years to create a sequel, Warner Brothers came to Joe Dante and more or less gave him carte blanche if he were to direct. So... What do you do if you're making a sequel to a film where the special effects and puppets cause you lots of headaches? Well, obviously the answer is you add many, many, many more puppets. (laughs) Uh, You also roundly take the piss out of the original, cram it full of jokes and create a live-action Looney Tunes adventure that not so much breaks the fourth wall as shatters it entirely. And it, it is glorious. The setting this time is New York City, where Billy and Kate work in the Clamp Center, and the head of its time smart building, whose automated systems ring particularly true in 2022, by featuring many solutions to problems that don't exist, and being phenomenally unreliable. One of the great surprises of Gremlins 2 being its unexpected prescience. Amongst the tenants of this Trump Tower-like building, Daniel Clamp, played by John Glover, was based on Trump, though... Clamp has some degree of self-awareness and is even vaguely likeable, so he's not a strong analogue. <laughs> it's one of the tenets is Christopher Lee's genetics laboratory, Splice of Life, Designer Genes, where Billy re-encounters Gizmo. Before Billy can successfully get Gizmo out of the building, the unfortunate little critter gets wet once more and the whole rigmarole begins again, only this time within the confines of a skyscraper. Though it's in the middle of a huge, densely populated metropolis and the stakes are somewhat higher. But, really, in its plot, which is entirely solid, and very much in keeping with many sequels, it's very much more of the same. And that's fine. The film functions very well as a traditional sequel, and if that was it, it'd be acceptable, if perhaps forgettable. Gremlins 2, though, is unlike any other sequel I can remember seeing especially to a major studio film, and on top of the traditional structure, it's a layer of anarchy, winking and meta-commentary. The film picks holes in the plot and mechanics of the first film, features film critic Leonard Maltin reviewing the VHS release of Gremlins, cocks a snook at movie merchandising, and finds a fifth wall to break, which shouldn't even be a thing. (laughs) On top of that, there are gags every minute, or perhaps even more frequently, in dialogue, props, character names, references and more, in everything from beakers of acid carrying the warning, do not throw in face, (laughs) to the determined indifference of New Yorkers to weird (laughs) happening on the street, and Kate beginning to recount how yet another national holiday was ruined for her by childhood tragedy. It's hard to compare Gremlins 2 to Gremlins because they are so similar yet so different. 
the original is a better film and a classic, but each time I watch the new batch, I like it more. And I am now far removed from my largely underwhelmed first impression. Though, to be fair to younger me, I was 10. Now, I know better. And so should you. Yeah, I must have watched this when I was a kid, because I remember bits of it here and there, but... uh if you'd asked me to describe what the whole plot of it was, I couldn't have given you much, much more than uh, it's kind of like the first one. Um, so it was quite a surprise to go back and watch this and find out just how dense it is. Um, it feels more like a um, Naked Gun-esque Zucker uh, Abrams production <laughs> than it does um, almost anything else. Um, there's so much going on in the background. There was some of that, to be fair, in uh, Gremlins as well. Lots of little background grags and, and things going on uh, there, but nothing like to the scale that's been managed in Kremlins 2, um, which was a bit of a revelation. Um, and did make me want to go back and actually I'll need to watch this again a few times to pick up on all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, awful lot going on there. Um, lots of great, um, well, almost cameos from like Christopher Lee and um, the holographic doctor from Star Trek. And, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, that, as, as you kind of say there, Drew, I, I don't know if we could necessarily say it's a better film than the first one, um, uh, g- given its genesis and kind of how it's plotted and all that. And uh, uh, But it, it's certainly a, it's its own beast, I think, and uh, a, a, a very worthwhile watch in its own right. And uh, yes, it's arguably something that probably rewards repeat viewing more than uh, Gremlins 1 does, I would think. Uh, yes, uh, interesting little film. Very happy to have watched it again. And I will do so. Oh, I'm de- I will definitely watch it again sometime soon. Hmm. Uh, it, it's just so for you, go on, Craig. It's like, in terms of like repeat viewing too, because they're, they're so, as you say, Scott, it's so dense. There's so many things you could easily miss, like the no gizmo t shirt and the little teddy bear with a noose around its neck. And there's, there's just <laughs> so much going on there. It's weird because, by all accounts, uh, the effects studio who created the puppets kind of. Was it the same one who. I, and I've not bothered in the interim to look up who it was. <laughs> is it the same studio again? I don't know if it's the same studio. I know the the puppets guy, like the main special effects guy, was different. The yeah. first guy at that point was he'd done special effects on the fly, and he himself directed the fly too, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they did a they got a different guy in to do the ones in Gremlins too. So yeah. they're kind of in some degrees better. Certainly they're different because he wanted to put his own stamp on. Um, yeah. So they, they do look notably different from the the puppets in the first one. Yeah. It's like the volume of gremlins uh, has increased exponentially. It's ludicrous um, the number of gremlins puppets there it's are. Absolutely bizarre. And uh, the most impressive thing I think about gremlins too is, is the fact that the effects teams rose to the occasion because by all accounts from what I understand they, they, they struggled on the first film but I was it six years between movies I six, can't yeah. yeah I can't remember if Gremlins 2 or Back to the Future Part 3 because they were both 1990 uh, production dates was the first 12 rated film I went to see at the cinema but I think it was Gremlins 2 and at that age, I was, well, A, <laughs> news just in, I wasn't quite 12. I had to lie <laughs> to the person selling the tickets. But um, I was also incredibly impressionable. And so I have really fond memories of Gremlins 2. And I think I might have watched it once on TV when it premiered on terrestrial TV a couple of years or maybe... I mean, back then, you're, it was like two to three years before something would actually premiere on TV over here, right? I think that was maybe the last occasion where I saw Gremlins 2. So pushing three decades, and I had such a memory of this film being absolutely wall-to-wall, anarchic, comedic action like the sort of comic and action elements of the first film ramped up so much further that I was kind of disappointed coming back to it now and re-watching it a couple of nights ago in that it didn't live up to my recollection. I am entirely accepting of the fact that that is a problem with my memory and not with the movie itself because I think there's an awful lot to enjoy with Gremlins 2. I think I'm correct in saying that Joe Dante prefers Gremlins 2 by some margin. And like you say, I think the, well, the the devil, as Mogwai translates from Cantonese, I believe, mm-hmm. is in the detail. The 
the background detail in this film is absolutely bananas. I'm not entirely sure that in a lifetime you could perhaps watch it <laughs> enough times to sort of pick up on all the sort of incidental detail and the effort that's been put into sort of in jokes and and I appreciate the the self referential nature of the movie. They query. You know, they call out the whole sort of thing about the the midnight conundrum. Phoebe Cates' character um, is the butt of a joke uh, that calls back to her Santa stuck in the chimney scene from the first film. It's very, Mm -hmm. very self-aware. And I think probably all the better for it. I think on this view, though, it's just a victim of, uh, again, those nostalgia goggles that I mentioned uh, in my gremlins one blurb that uh, it didn't quite live up to my memory and again that's not a problem of the films that's very much a problem of my own if i had to pick one film to recommend over the other i think i would probably say gremlins 2 because it's not as though the concept is difficult to pick up (laughs) i don't think gremlins offers a lot of backstory that you need to fill in before you can approach (laughs) gremlins 2 uh in fact the the sort of the weakest elements of this film are the clunky nature with which it brings uh a sequel audience up to speed with the parameters of the first film but thereafter yes it's a a great deal of fun and I'm sure pretty much everyone involved had fun and I know that usually that's a, a, a the, the more fun the cast are having probably the worst time the audience are having but it is just a, a massive amount of fun uh, I don't know that I'm going to go back and watch it again anytime soon I think I've probably reached my quotient of gremlins but it's yeah it's inventive I think it's imaginative uh, it's a massive amount of fun and I would not want to put anyone else uh, sorry anyone off from watching it yeah I when I first saw this and I guess I must have lied at the cinema as well because I sure saw this in the cinema it was um I kind of disappointing to me I think I remember like I never really liked it all that much and then I've watched a few times since and every time I've watched I've enjoyed it more silly with sort of uh, increasing critical faculties and experience of the world and things, the whole meta thing mm. has worked a lot more for me as I've gotten older and more experienced. And now sitting in this most recent viewing, which was just today, I watched the two of them back to back. I didn't, I couldn't easily split them in terms of how much I liked them. I still think Gremlins is probably a slightly more accomplished film. Mm-hmm. But then again, as I said in my introduction, it's hard to compare them because... They're so similar, yet at the same time, so very, very different. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's a good deal of fun. There's something about the film that sort of betrays the attitude of like, Warner Brothers basically had to beg Joe Dante to come back, give him carte blanche, and so, even though the, the puppets were nightmare, he got more of them in. Uh, it's not a surprise they're so good. The special effects in this were done by Rick Baker, mm. who's known for being quite good. And... It's almost like you said, right, you, you've begged me to come back. I don't want to do this. Here's what you're getting. And I've, um, I have I kind of feel there's quite a, a strong sense of that throughout the film. Mm, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just it's a hell of a lot of fun. Effects-wise as well, I don't know if recent versions of this have been cleaned up for matte lines and stuff, but you know the sort of wide shots where... Uh, there, there are two or three wide shots in the film where sort of gizmo is... Uh, uh, interacting with the scenery or sort of generally sort of walking about where it's clearly been done in a stop motion way and it, I don't know if it's been cleaned up but if it hasn't it's actually looks pretty good even for you know for 1990 or when, whenever this was uh, been, I wonder if we've watched different versions there because like the bits where I thought the special effects didn't work were the two bits we see Gizmo walking yeah. one is in the street scene at the beginning yeah, and there's one later. And I thought they looked pretty bad, whereas all the rest of stuff looked really good. Yeah, huh? It's a good deal of fun. I wouldn't want to say to anyone, "Don't watch it." But again, for a modern audience, I don't know. I don't know if you haven't seen it before. Is it essential viewing? Hmm. But what is <laughs> exactly? Who would define such a thing? Uh, yes, it's. A weird one. I, I don't think you would get as much out of Gremlins 2 if you had not seen Gremlins 1 in the first place. So mm. it, it's maybe not necessary to understand it, but I think it might be necessary to get some of the jokes and references that are going on and it. it might yeah, yeah, yeah. frame it a bit better. Yeah, you're certainly uh, never going to get the the joke about the Lincoln's birthday. Mm. Yeah. That sort yeah. of thing. So it, it's worth watching both, I would think. 
I think arguably, for me at least, Gremlins 2 was funnier, but Gremlins 1 kind of works better as a self-contained film, whereas Gremlins mm. 2 maybe doesn't in that regard. But, yeah, splitting hairs, uh, both I think are, are well worth taking a look at. Agreed. Hmm. Yeah, probably agreed.